Do you think aliens have visited Earth? You've mentioned that they could have visited and started civilizations and wouldn't, we wouldn't even know about it if it was a hundred million years ago. How can we even begin to answer this question? Whether Got to look. Got to look. Got to figure out ways to look. So I, you know, I mean, I, I don't put it, it's not high on my list of, you know, things that I'm, I think are probable, but it's certainly, it needs to be explored, you know, and unless you look, you never know. So looking on the moon, look at where would we find if, if aliens had passed through the solar system anytime in the last 3 billion years, where might we find artifacts? Where might artifacts still be around? Earth, probably not because of weathering and resurfacing. Um, the moon's a good place. Uh, certain kinds of orbits, you know, maybe they parked a probe in an orbit that was stable. So you got to figure out which orbits actually you could put something there and it'll last for a billion years. So those are the kind of questions I, I don't, like I said, I don't, it's not high on my list of thinking this could happen, but it, it could happen. I certainly can't, unless you look, you don't know. What about, speaking of biases, what about if aliens visiting Earth is the elephant in the room? Meaning like uh, the potential of aliens, say, seeding life on Earth. Uh, you mean like in that directed panspermia? I've directed actually, panspermia. Yeah. Or seeding some aspect of the evolution. Like 2001. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's a great story, but uh, you know, always with Occam's razor or whatever with science, if I can, if I can answer that question without that extra, very detailed, uh, hypothesis, then I should. And you know, the idea that evolution is a natural process, that's what I would go for first, right? There's, there's, that just seems it's so much easier to do it that way than adding, you know, sort of, cause it's kind of a Dewey, duos ex machina thing of like, oh, then the aliens came down and they solved that problem that you're trying to solve by just coming down and putting their finger on the scales. So to you, the origin of life is a, is a pretty simple thing that doesn't require an alien. I wouldn't say that it's not a simple thing, but it doesn't, you know, it, putting, I, I think because, you know, all you're doing is kicking the can down the road, right? The aliens, some, the aliens formed, right? So you're just saying like, all right, I'm just kicking the can down the road to the aliens. How did they, how did, what was their abiogenesis event? Well, so from a different perspective, I'm just saying, it seems to me that there's obviously advanced civilizations everywhere throughout the galaxy and through the universe from the Drake equation perspective. And then if I was an alien, what would I do? <laughs> you know, I've gotten a chance to learn about the uncontacted tribes in the Amazon. I recently went to the Amazon, you get to understand how they function yeah. and how the humans in the Amazon that are in contact with the civilized world, how they interact with the uncontacted tribes. First of all, the uncontacted tribes are very violent towards the outside world, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but everybody else tries to stay away from them. They yeah. try to kind of protect them, don't talk about them, right. Don't, right. don't talk about their location and all this kind of stuff. And I've begun to internalize and understand that perspective of why you're doing that. And if I was an alien civilization, if I probably would be doing a similar kind of thing. And of course, there's always the teenager or the troll who's going to start messing with the stuff or the scientists. Yeah, you know? yeah uh, right, right. And so it, it's not, <laughs> from our perspective, yes. And if you're in the Truman Show, like Occam's Razor, but like also the Occam's Razor from the perspective of the alien civilization, we have to have the humility to understand that that interaction will be extremely difficult to detect, that it will not be obvious. Right, I understand the logic of what you're saying, but the problem for me with that is that, right there, the, first you have to assume that alien civilizations are common, which I'm not sure about it, that my, most of them may be dead, or they're not, yeah, it's still, you know, like I, I, while I think that life is common, and again, this is just my biases, right? So now the problem is how do we sort out sort of, you know, the, the, the biases we're bringing or the assumptions we're bringing in from, you know, from the, the, the sort of causal chain that comes yeah. out of that. I would first want to try and do this without it. Like, you know, if we're looking at the origin of life or the evolution of life on earth, I'd want to do it just on its own without asking for this other layer. Um, because I, there, it requires a bunch of these other assumptions, which also have their own sort of breaking of causal chains. Cause I don't really... Like the idea that when you ask, what would you do if you were an alien? But again, like alien minds could be so unbelievably different, right? That they wouldn't even recognize the question you just posed, right? Right? Because it's just like, you know, we're very much, we have a very particular kind of cognitive structure or cognitive, uh, you know, and, and we're very governed by, you know, even if you went and talked to, this is an interesting thing to think about. You know, if I could suddenly magically appear a uh, hundred thousand years ago and talk to a hunter gatherer 
about their worldview and their motivations. You know, I might find something that like bore no resemblance to things that I think are sort of, oh, that's what naturally humans do. Well, let me let me ask you this question. Let's let's together do the thought experiment. Yeah. Yeah. If we either create a time machine that allows us to travel back and to talk to them. Yeah. Or we discover maybe a primitive alien civilization on a nearby star system. What what would we do? Yeah, I think uh, that's a great question. I mean, so, you know, it's interesting how that even brings up the ethical questions, right? Let's say that, you know, would we, we'd have to first sort of sort out what are the consequences for them and what do we feel our ethical responsibilities are to them? And also, sorry, from a capitalist perspective, what are we to gain yeah, from this right. interaction? Right, right, right. You look at the way the missionaries, you know, missionaries had these interactions because they thought converting them to whatever religion they were, you know, was the most important. That's what the gain was. So from our perspective, I mean, we'd have to sort that out. I think given, you know, if we're doing this uh, um, thought experiment, we are curious. And I think eventually we'd want to reach out to them. Now, I think when you say we, you pro let's start you with me. the people in this room, right? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. there is, I wonder who the dominant forces are in the world, because I think there's a lot of people the military, yeah, they they will probably move first so they can steal whatever advantage they can from this new discovery so they can hurt China or China hurt America. That's one perspective. Then there's the the capitalists who will see like how the benefits and the, uh, the costs here and how can I make money off of this? There's opportunity here. There's gold right. in them hills. And I wonder, and I think the scientist is just not going to, unlike the movies. <laughs> We're not going to get much say. They're going to put them. <laughs> hey, guys, we, uh, wait a minute. They would engage, probably. I mean, it's just, as as a human society as we are now, we would engage. And we would be detectable, I think. Like in our engagement. In our engagement. Yeah, yeah, probably. So using that trivial biased logic, I just it just feels like aliens would need to be engaging in a very obvious way. Yeah. Uh, which brings up that old direct for me paradox for me.